Um, and now, believe it or not, we are ready for our next presentation. Uh, Katie, I will call you to the table here. Um, Katie, uh, you're going to share with us about John Hancock. Let's just make sure that you um, are available and spotlighted. Katie Boyer. Yeah. Can you hear me yeah. now? There you are. Yes, I can hear you. Awesome. Awesome. And do I share my video or do you have to do it? Um, there you go. You oh, are. Perfect. Now I see you. Yes. So we will spotlight you in just a moment. Okay. And um, then you should have access to uh, share your deck. And you're going to talk to us today about participants and the survey that John Hancock recently completed about things that drive stress for participants. Right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So quick question, Elke. Do you want are, are you guys doing the slide deck or do you want me to do it? Uh, at this point, I'd say go ahead and, and prepare. Okay. Your deck. Yeah, that'd be great. OK, perfect. I can do that for you. Give me just one second. Uh, in the meantime, I can go ahead and introduce myself. So uh, Elke, thank you for that. My name is Katie Boyer Malloy. I am a national TPA channel director here at John Hancock, and I am lucky enough to cover the Definity relationship. So first and foremost, thank you for being here and thank you for having me. Um, excited to present on this topic. Uh, this is the second one of these that I've participated in. So excited to see good feedback um, and interest from the folks who are joining. So always good to see that we have quite a few people on the uh, presentation today. So give me one second here. I'm just going to continue to get to that. And okay, I apologize. I had it pulled up and then I saw everyone else. It looked like the slides are being done by you. So my my bad for not having that ready. So give me just one sec. Um, but one thing I did want to just kind of reference as part of this um, First and foremost, uh, our, our partnership with Definity, I think, has been incredible in a lot of ways. And with their their tremendous growth that they've seen, both through acquisition and organic growth over the last couple of years, is uh, a big deal. So we're really excited to be a part of it and to have an opportunity um, to present to their advisor community, I think, is, is also a big deal. So thank you all for being here. And Slide Deck is coming up. So I did a decent job of... Uh, taking up some time there. So let me share my screen and make sure you all can in fact see it. So give me one second. Okay, so we are going to share and then Elke, I'll have you actually confirm for me that you can in fact see it and we'll go from there. Yes, ma'am. It looks good. All right. Perfect. So one awkward thing that I hate about presentations is whenever you see me staring off into another screen. So I'm actually going to stop my video just because I think it's awkward. So my presentation today, I'm going to keep this as short and sweet as possible. Uh, there are 25 slides. I don't know that I will touch on all of them. But just as a quick reference point, this information is available at retirement.johnhancock.com. And if you go out to the website, one of the first things you'll see will pop up says something along the lines of stress, finances, and well-being. So if you want to download this for yourself to have a copy, please know it's out there, it's available to you, and it is intended for your use. So if we don't cover in my 18 minutes all of the components, everything is available to you. So um one of the nice parts about having conversations like this and being able to talk to our advisor community is we're all kind of talking about the same things, but sometimes it's hard to talk about some of the difficult things, right? So everyone's mission is to allow plan sponsors, to allow participants to retire with dignity. And while we do everything we can in our power to control what we can to help provide them with those resources, there are still some things that you know, end up kind of being a barrier, right? There are stressors that are caused with their traditional finances, with, um, you know, with different things that are going on in their lives. So John Hancock does an annual survey, and this is the ninth annual survey that we've done that's based on stress, finances, and well-being. And just under 4,000 participants were surveyed, and this is across all different plan sizes, different ages, so we're trying to get a wide range to make sure that the data that we're providing to you isn't super one-sided or geared towards a specific age group or those making a certain amount of money. So what we're trying to do here really is to develop solutions that help make it easier for people to save and to 
you know, kind of get some information about, you know, how many times people are checking into things, how many times they're logging into their accounts, different saving behaviors, uh, current contribution rates. We're trying to take in all of that information to provide what we can to, you know, our financial advisors, to participants to kind of let you know what we're seeing in the industry and to hopefully provide some good information that will be beneficial to you as you're walking into client meetings. Okay, so kind of jumping forward here, financial well-being definitely improved during the pandemic with many people using that time to build savings and pay down debt. But unfortunately, last year, the progress really kind of reversed course due to record high inflation and rising interest rates. So people have really had to start making some tough decisions about spending and long term goals. And both financial and mental health has kind of suffered during that time. So in light of that, employees are looking for help now more than ever to assist in managing the weight of both their personal finances, as well as helping to ensure that their retirement planning doesn't doesn't fall behind. So in addition, our findings do show a clear connection between driving engagement to the available Available resources that you have, employee financial outcomes, and their level of stress, definitely underscoring the importance of access to and the awareness of retirement planning and financial wellness resources. All right, so we're going to cover the economy, worker stress, and the impact on employers specifically. So looking at what's top of mind for participants, I'm sure a lot of this won't shock you, but some of the numbers were a little surprising to me. 70% um, of workers are worried a great deal about the economy. Inflation and the rising cost of living are the top worry for the majority of employees, and economic conditions and rising interest rates follow that. And unfortunately, participants don't feel that relief is really in sight. 65% uh, don't think that those prices will be lower by the end of this year, and 58% don't think we'll be over the worst of the economic downturn. The economic concerns are also having a ripple effect on workers' mental well-being. So 70% of employees report that the economy is affecting their mental health. When we look at segments within that, 81% of Gen Zers and Millennials reported struggling with their mental health the most. So we all know the importance of mental health and we can see the impact of the workplace as well, with 43% saying that their mental health has interfered with their job performance. And the majority of people report feeling burned out at least some of the time. So as much as people try to keep their home and work life separate, many find it hard to leave financial concerns at the door, with 80% of people saying that they worry about their finances at work. Per personal finances are taking up time at work, with an average of 3.3 hours spent on, first, on personal finances at work each month. This added distraction affects job performance as well, making stress not only a personal issue, but a business issue that can be a real cost for employers. And when we look at the lost productivity and absenteeism due to the symptoms of financial stress that impact to employers, it equates to nearly $2,000 per employee per year. So a pretty significant cost there. All right, let's move on a little bit to personal finances and retirement planning. So even in the current economic environment, workers still want to be able to save money, plan for retirement, and pay off debt. But many are falling behind on all three and are really worried about financial difficulties in the coming months. So the three key financial concerns reported are having enough saved for retirement, credit card debt, and emergency savings. So people are, are definitely feeling the effects of the record high inflation and rising interest rates of personal finances and household budgets. And the vast majority of workers have had to absorb a sudden increase in their cost of living with nine and 10 paying more for essentials. Plus, people are feeling the pinch across the board from groceries, household basics, gas to monthly bills. So to help manage these higher expenses, people have had to make changes to their spending habits. 76% say they're being more deliberate with their purchases, and 61% are comparing costs across the board. And when the pinch becomes too much of a squeeze, people are really looking to, say, to, um, to their savings to cover those gaps, with 19% of workers saying that they've recently dipped into their savings just to help co um, cover those daily costs of life. In light of the pressures on personal finances, retirement savings took a big step backward, with 56% of workers saying they've fallen behind compared to 43% of the, pre the previous year. So we've seen a definite uptick in, uh, in the concern there. But across demographics, this has led to heightened concerns about being able to afford basic expenses and health care in retirement. This one I, I think was kind of a bummer to hear, but overall 38% of workers think they'll now retire later than planned, but for some groups that figure is even higher, especially including those with major debt, those who feel poorly about their financial situation, those with student loans, and those who are feeling stressed. 
So inflation and rising interest rates are making it harder for people to, you know, to meet current living expenses and make progress on goals, but they're looking to employers, financial professionals like you all, and retirement plan providers for help navigating what they view to be a very unpredictable economy. So workers don't want to travel the road to financial well-being alone. Six in 10 consider the information they receive from their employers, financial professionals, and retirement plan providers when making their financial decisions. Workplace retirement plans have become a must-have for most people, with 80% saying they would be unlikely to work for a company that doesn't offer one. The majority of workers also believe that support in these areas would help them do more to prepare financially for retirement. And keep in mind, these numbers are across all age demographics, so it's not just those nearing retirement are making active planning decisions. So we're talking about a large percentage of the entire working population. And most workers really do see value in workplace financial wellness programs, with 78% saying it's important for employers to offer financial wellness resources. In addition, a growing number say access to these resources really has a positive impact on their lives. And year over year, the appreciation for financial wellness has increased, with 82% saying having access to a financial wellness program would help reduce financial stress, 78% saying these resources would make them more likely to stay with their current employer, 77% being more likely to recommend their employer to others, and an increase to productivity by 70%. And something worth noting is that when looking at who has access to financial wellness programs, 41% said they weren't sure if their employer offered a financial wellness program. And that is a really significant gap. So knowing how valued these programs are, according to surveys like this, we really need to make sure we're driving the awareness of available resources to participants. So whether you're a record keeper, you know, whether the record keeper is John Hancock or whomever it is, all of the national record keepers are trying to offer a lot of additional value adds in their program. So it's really important to make sure that you're continuing to drive that message home. Um, one of the things that I have seen, at least in my recent experience, especially in with conference travel and speaking at different engagements, is that a lot of folks are saying, you know, how do we know when the right time is to market some of these value adds? Or how do we stay relevant to make sure people understand and appreciate these other things that we are adding? And really, it all comes down to just consistency of the message. So we do all offer a lot of great things. Um, John Hancock has a lot of great programs that we offer. But again, if it doesn't hit a participant at a time of need, it's kind of in one ear and out the other. So it is really important that we stay consistent on our messaging. And depending on what the different value adds are, there are different times of year that we know are less of a stressor, less things going on, or even just more you know, time sensitive based off of whatever the thing might be. So it's just a matter of consistency. So don't lose sight of it. I think it's very, very important. And again, these survey results really kind of show it. Hey, these are things that are important to our participants. So let's make sure they know that they're there. So we'll spend a little bit more time on the positive effects of driving engagement, but we did want to flag that there's definitely an opportunity to help ensure organizations are deriving as much value as possible just from those resources that they provide to their participants. Okay, so behaviors that drive financial health. Workers' responses confirmed what we have long believed, being actively engaged in their finances helps improve financial health. Receiving support that encourages the positive behavior, professional advice, planning tools, digital access to accounts, and frequent email communications do truly make a difference. So you can see how the combination of support has the greatest impact on how workers feel about their financial situation. Uh, people who don't have access to financial support are faring the worst, but as they start to use available resources such as financial wellness programs, they start to feel better about their situation. From there, having a financial plan for retirement gives a boost, and then working with a financial professional significantly increases the positive view of their finances. So when you combine all of those factors, the greatest impact is felt by employees reinforcing the importance of making access to these resources critical to both retirement readiness and reducing financial stress. So looking at one-on-one -on -one advice, such as working with a financial advisor, employees are three times more likely to say their retirement savings are ahead of schedule. And being able to work with a financial advisor can help reverse the trend we saw in that earlier slide with those expecting to have to delay their retirement plans. Providing easy access to account information, sending frequent communications about saving for retirement have a positive effect on how people feel about retirement readiness. 
When we think about driving behaviors that matter, logging into their retirement account and engaging with digital communications are two critical components. So participants who engage with digital outreach and log into their accounts are more likely to be on track. They're more likely to expect to retire when planned or earlier, and they report having a good to excellent financial situation. So when we look at the positive in outcomes of digital engagement, people who regularly engage digitally have an average contribution rate that's 20% higher than those who only open one or two emails. Okay, so helping deliver the support workers want. These are project projections of estimated income and expenses in retirement, including health, health, sorry, health care. So 91% want to see estimated income and expenses in retirement. So they want to kind of look forward. So 23% of participants made a positive change to their contribution rate after using a retirement planner. And 4.22% is the average contribution rate increase for those utilizing it. So decent numbers to see there just based off of people using the resources available. Um, little plug for John Hancock, we do offer a lot of webinars to help build financial know-how. So if you go out to the website retirement.johnhancock.com on the participant side, there are different areas that we cover. The calendar is available for them to view, but you know, making the most of social security, handling student loan debt, setting financial goals, and how to navigate Medicare. Again, these are all things that may not necessarily resonate with someone this second or may not be a point of interest that you know they have enough time to delve into right now. But if we're constantly pushing them out there, it just has to hit at the right time that that information becomes pertinent to them and you're just continuing to give them resources. So again, we offer those through John Hancock. This can all be found out on retirement.johnhancock.com, but a lot of resources that are available for you to continue to push your participants to. If you hear someone say, hey, you know, we're really struggling right now with student loan debt and I'm having an issue as to deciding, you know, whether or not to put the funds that I have currently. So we do offer a lot of materials. And again, I know we're not alone in that. A lot of the other record keepers have similar things like that. So make sure you're utilizing the resources that are available to you, especially whenever you hear directly from plan sponsors and participants that it's a subject of interest that they could benefit from. Okay, so the John Hancock Personalized Retirement Advice, uh, again, more things that we offer through our program, but 88% say professional management of their retirement plan investments and savings would help them save more. Um, we provide employees with ongoing professional management of their retirement account, account and different uh, materials that they can see out there as well. So again, lots of different offerings through the John Hancock platform that are available to uh, you, to you, to plan sponsors and to your participants. Just a quick review of the Learning Center and Emergency Savings. The My Learning Center through John Hancock provides financial wellness assessments, customized learning paths, and a badge reward program. And of course, on the emergency savings side, access to set up an emergency savings account with no fees, withdrawals available at any time and at no cost. And just the key takeaways from this, and I'm honestly shocked that I got through all of this uh, in my 20 minutes, but the key takeaways are evaluating your current level of support, partnering up to optimize support, and this of course is on the participant side, assessing employee communication strategy, and really benchmarking the offering. Those are the things that we want to make sure we're turning around and delivering to our participants. All right, and here is our lovely important information and disclosures. And again, thank you all so very much for having me today. I really appreciate getting to be a part of this. I will stop my share. I will actually turn myself back on so you can tell I'm a real person and not a talking head. <laughs> Were there any questions, Elke? Well, uh, so I just wanted to reflect. I mean, we've, we've had a lot of conversation today about helping the participants and helping plan sponsors really maximize uh, what they're doing. And I think that this was a great way to encapsulate what we were talking about with the Retirement Academy, right? Um, as, as advisors are talking to plan sponsors and they're worried about uh, their employee base and what's happening. It's really great to know that there are some resources out there. So, um, so this participant study is available on John Hancock. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. Retirement.johnhancock.com. Like I said, on the landing page, you'll see it. As soon as you click, it gives you an option in the upper right to download, and it'll give you a similar deck to what you just saw with me. Fantastic. Okay, so it looks like your colleague Kevin Spieth has additional congratulatory edits, but I will let him share that with you personally, as there are lots of people on this call. So uh, yes, thank you, Katie. I think that concludes our questions. Thank you so much for participating today. We really appreciate John Hancock and the resources that you make available. Thanks for your time and energy today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Take care, everybody.
Yeah. So um, as we close out the Definity Retirement Academy for today, I just wanted to close on uh, two quick notes. Um, all of these sessions will be re are re being recorded and we will have them available uh, next week. We will send out email links whenever those are available. So you'll want to watch for your email and make sure that um, you can see them. And then we also have um, those materials are available um, Ev they're evergreen. So if you went out to the Definity website, you could look at uh, Definity Retirement Academy sessions from last year, from November, or even the year before. Um, it's a resource that we want to make available both to plan sponsors and also to our financial advisor partners. Um, but you'll always be able to find those out on Definity.com. Uh, just quickly, wanted to give a plug now that we have concluded today's session. Um, we will be having a November, oops, I got extra chats here, so let me pause that. We will have um, a, an additional semester, our fall semester is scheduled for November uh, 7th and 8th. Uh, and this will be something that um, will be structured even more as an educational experience. We're looking at um, offering CEUs and C CE credits. Uh, so it'll be even more tailored uh, towards the financial advisor on the advisor track. Plan sponsors, we're still offering some fantastic educational series over there. Uh, in fact, um, our plan sponsor track um, yesterday garnered a lot of responses. We've got some really talented uh, retirement plan consultants who are uh, anxious and ready to share their insights and expertise with uh, plan sponsors in a, in a webinar format. So it's a great resource. Uh, and then finally, I wanted to share that... Um, oh, there we go. There's our map again. Just a reminder that if you heard anything today that you wanted to follow up on or had a question about um, how Definity might be able to help you as a financial advisor uh, design a plan that, that works really well for your plan sponsors, please feel free to reach out. Uh, you can find our sales map at definity.com slash sales dash map. Uh, download that and you'll be able to uh, find access to any of your regional sales consultants and any one of them would be more than willing to visit with you um, about possibilities. Uh, no matter which record keeper you're with or uh, which TPA you're with, we would love to visit with you. So uh, keep those uh, two things in mind um, that we'll hold another Retirement Academy in November and that we are here to help however that might uh, be. So thanks again to all of our sponsors and participants today. Um, we really appreciate your time and energy and uh, support of what Definity is doing here today. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, that's a wrap. Class dismissed. We'll see you in November. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>